Hi there, and welcome to this podcast from Adept English. Today, let's do news. However, I'm not going to talk about mainstream news. I find myself not even wanting to look at mainstream news, though I do keep up to date with what's happening. But today, let's find some news stories that are a bit more off the beaten track, as we say in English. That idiom, off the beaten track, means on less used paths, more difficult to find. Imagine, for example, if a pair of these gave you much more information about people passing on the street. Is that the stuff of sci-fi movies or not? Let's find out and let's talk about some news stories that are more unusual, ones you perhaps haven't seen. But don't forget this is an English language learning exercise. That's what this podcast is for. So see how much you can understand first time through and then repeat listen. That way you're more likely to remember any new words or phrases. It works much better than other methods of learning. And stick around to the end. You'll hear a surprising story about how British people protest in their own unique way. It's a perfect example of the British character in action. So stick around to the end for that. Hello, I'm Hilary and you're listening to Adept English. We will help you to speak English fluently. All you have to do is listen. So start listening now and find out how it works. So our first news item, and this one is in the category of alarming AI news. So this week there was news of a frightening project set up by a couple of college students. I didn't know these existed, but apparently in combination with Ray-Ban, the sunglasses company, Meta have already developed smart glasses. They look a bit like these. Fancier than mine, of course. Mine aren't Ray-Bans. But this is truly like something from a sci-fi movie. That's sci-fi or science fiction. The smart glasses from Meta and Ray-Ban allow you to take photographs or videos of what you're seeing. They can also scan QR codes and they give you reminders of certain events in your life, just like a phone. Kind of useful, I suppose, and an extension of your smartphone. But they have, and you've guessed it, an AI or an artificial intelligence interface. And the plan is to extend the functions of these models later this year. Later in the year, they will be able to translate languages for you. English, French, Italian and Spanish. No need to learn a language then, apparently. And you can listen to music on them. The glasses now work with Spotify, Amazon Music, Audible, and they're available to buy on Amazon at around the price of $300. But, and this is the scary part, two university students, Arn Few Nguyen and Kane Arde Fio, are reading computer science at Harvard. So they're Harvard University students. And they've designed a tool which interfaces with the smart glasses. The tool uses photographs taken by the smart glasses and uses facial recognition software to identify where else that person's face can be seen online. Facial recognition software, that's a computer program that recognises faces. I'm sure you've seen that orange box around someone's face on a photograph and your phone will group photographs of the same person together because it recognises their face. Well, this tool linked to the smart glasses can find the person that you were speaking to or the person who just walked past in the street, someone you don't know. The tool finds their details online with a powerful search and can find information like the person's address, their name, their phone number, their occupation or job, where they work, and perhaps even names of their family members. Can you imagine if this sort of thing was in widespread use? You don't even need to speak to someone. You can just take a photograph secretly of them with your smart glasses and then find out all about them online. That's heaven for stalkers. 
that word S-T-A-L-K-E-R. Don't misunderstand, though. This tool has been written by two college students. It isn't something that you can buy. Yet. But how long, I wonder, before this sort of thing becomes available to buy? AI is scary. I know there's a lot of hype. That's H-Y-P-E. Hype means exaggerated publicity and exaggerated feeling and reaction. But I think there are genuine and sensible concerns, certainly about people's privacy. That's P-R-I-V-A-C-Y as well as people's creativity being stolen from them. But also there are concerns because the rise of AI, the rise of artificial intelligence, is being driven by people making lots of money from it. Another frightening statistic I read this week, and this was reported in February this year, 2024, 96% of the increase in wealth in the last year for the top 500 richest people? Well, it all came from investment in AI. The word wealth, W-E-A-L-T-H, means how much money someone has. So AI is currently making billions of pounds, billions of dollars for rich people, for powerful people in the world. I don't know that there's going to be a way of stopping it or that there's going to be much morality or constraint in its use if companies and people are making so much money from it. In the past, governments of particular countries would have made laws to control its use. But how can this be possible in an online world where international boundaries don't matter? Doesn't matter what country you're in. International boundaries aren't relevant and power comes from billion dollar stocks and shares. It's frightening stuff if you think about it, that money is driving something so dangerous and so capable of disrupting our lives. Rant over, let's move on to another news item. That's rant, R-A-N-T. First of all, if you're enjoying the podcast, but you would like more structured content, more structured learning, then our courses also use our listen and learn method. If the podcasts are difficult for you to understand, you would benefit from our course, The Most Common 500 Words. And if you already have a good understanding of English, but you're struggling to speak, our new Activate Your Listening course will help. Our courses don't cost much in comparison to other language courses. They're much cheaper and they're all available on our website at adeptenglish.com. A nicer story from the UK this week. Well, I say a nice story. Let's see what you think of it. It's a story from the world of art, A-R-T. There's a popular BBC television programme called Fake or Fortune, and it's a programme about antiques. Members of the public bring items they possess, items from their homes, to show to people who are expert in antiques. And the experts tell the person how much the item is worth. And sometimes there are some surprising finds, surprising outcomes. The word antique, A-N-T-I-Q-U-E, it's both a noun and an adjective. And it refers to items of artistic merit, usually, that are over 100 years old. You can have antique furniture, antique artwork, antique silverware, antique china. I'm sure you're familiar with this idea. Well, apparently an artist from Lincoln in the UK called David Taylor bought a painting in a sale in his local area. He really liked the painting and he paid £2,000 for it. The painting is called The Bean Harvest and it's a painting of women collecting beans in a field. David Taylor took the painting to the TV programme Fake or Fortune and the antique experts had a look at it. They were able to verify for Mr. Taylor that this painting was in fact by a well-known and celebrated Canadian artist, a woman unusually, Helen McNichol, who was painting in the early 20th century, the early 1900s in other words. And the amazing news for Mr. Taylor, the painting is actually worth about £300,000. 
Imagine that, not bad when he paid £2,000 for it. The artist Helen McNichol had a career which was cut short when she died in 1915 from complications of diabetes at the age of 35. That's a sad story. But the artist David Taylor clearly knows a good painting when he sees one. The particular painting was confirmed as genuine or authentic, A-U-T-H-E-N-T-I-C, by experts. It had been missing for 110 years. What a find. One last news story, and apologies that these two last ones are both from the UK. I do try to find news from around the world, but finding interesting, not depressing news stories at the moment is quite difficult. But this last news story shows something of the British character. While some may say that French people are very good at protest, The stereotype, and it probably is one, that's S-T-E-R-E-O-T-Y-P-E, is that French people are great at protesting. They're out on the streets. The urge for fairness when things are going wrong is in the culture, perhaps following the French Revolution and all that history. The verb to protest, P-R-O-T-E-S-T, sometimes pronounced protest, It means that you find a way of making known your unhappiness, your negative feelings about something. You protest. Typically, people might march in the street with a banner or a placard with a message held high above their heads. But British people are often more reserved in their way of making protest. British people are very good at what you might call being passive-aggressive. That's P-A-S-S-I-V-E-A-G-G-R-E-S-S-I-E-V. Quite a mouthful. Passive-aggressive means you take apparently innocent action, but which causes problems and stops things from happening. And it may not look intentional, but underneath it is. That's passive-aggressive. And passive-aggressive is actually a type of personality. But here I'm describing it as actually part of the British character sometimes. So the story? The UK government recently brought in a law, LAW, about owning chickens. Chickens, C-H-I-C-K-E-N-S, or hens, H-E-N-S. Those are the birds from which we get the eggs that most of us eat. The law says that if you own chickens in the UK, you must register them with the UK government. Previously, this law was only in place for farmers. Chicken farmers are known as poultry farmers in the UK. P-O-U-L-T-R-Y, poultry. So previously, if you owned 50 or more chickens in the UK, you would have to register. But not if you owned fewer chickens than this. It sounds kind of sensible, There do need to be checks done on how people keep chickens to make sure that the conditions are good and humane. H-U-M-A-N-E, that means kind. And it's also to keep track of avian flu or bird flu. H5N1, in other words. So the law changed on the 1st of October and people had to register even if they just had one chicken. So some British people have been online making a protest. They're saying, this is silly, we don't want this. I sort of get their argument. There are plenty of wild birds flying around, perhaps communicating avian flu. Three chickens kept in an isolated area who don't fly around probably aren't that much risk. So what did people do to protest? Well, They protested by registering on the UK government website chickens of all kinds. This included frozen ones from the supermarket, chicken nuggets, toy chickens, even rubber chickens were registered. In fact, so many chickens were registered that the site crashed. It no longer worked. Humorous? A bit childish, perhaps? It's probably not going to stop the law, but it is one way of protesting. People are asking, what comes next? Are we going to have to register our budgies and canaries? I get both sides. Controlling bird flu is important. 
but I'm not sure that one or two chickens in someone's backyard are that much of a threat. As I say, given wild birds fly around freely. Anyway, whichever side of the argument you're on, this is protest typically British style, I felt. So there you are. Quite a lot of vocabulary here. It may take a bit of work to understand this podcast completely, but repeat listening will help you do that. And let us know your thoughts on these news stories. We love to hear from you. Enough for now. Have a lovely day. Speak to you again soon. Goodbye. Thank you so much for listening. Please help me tell others about this podcast by reviewing or rating it. And please share it on social media. You can find more listening lessons and a free English course at adeptenglish.com.